If there's one thing I've learned over the past few months, it's that developing games is really hard, especially if you're just starting out and have to learn everything from scratch. That being said, I have discovered a few methods that have completely changed the way I see game development, which in turn has made me a much faster learner. So I wanted to share some of these tips with you because I'm confident that game development can be made much easier if you're learning the right way. Just a side note, I'm not saying that all of these methods are going to turn everyone one into a pro indie dev overnight, but if you're finding yourself spending countless hours and not getting the results you're expecting, this video could help you find a new and hopefully better way to learn game development. And I know for a fact that following these practices are the biggest reason why I'm actually finishing projects. Before we get into the nitty gritty about the fastest way to learn game dev, I realize some of you might not even know where to get started. So I think it's important to give you an idea of some game engines to suit your own personal game dev needs. If you're already past this point in your journey, feel free to use this time code to skip ahead. If you don't know what a game engine is, it's basically the framework for making and testing your own games. Some developers like to make their own engines themselves, but if you're just starting out, you probably shouldn't worry about that right now, to be honest. The reason you should use pre-made game engines is that they usually have a set of tools designed to make your experience of learning a lot easier. It's also important to note that different engines are built for different scenarios, which is where you come in. If you wanted to make top-down RPGs with probably the easiest learning curve, try out RPG Maker. It's much more constricted than other game engines, but I do think it's one of the simplest to learn, and if you're planning on making a turn-based combat RPG, as a beginner, it might be the way to go. Because I like making 2D platformers, I chose Unity, which I think is probably the best engine there is for 2D games in general. It's definitely a challenging step up from RPG Maker, but it's also a solid trade-off for having more versatility in what you create. It's also free, and you can make 3D games on there too. There are tons of options, and I encourage you to do a little bit of research and give the ones that interest you a try. There are also thousands of tutorials for all of these engines, so give them a shot, and try not to be overwhelmed because it does get easier. This is arguably the hardest step of the process, but I promise it is essential to finding success in your game dev journey. I've talked about this a little bit before, but I wanted to dive deeper because I think it's something beginner game devs hear all the time, but you're never really told why. At least that's how I felt. There's something to be said about someone just starting out and having an ego. The reason why most of us get into this new passion is because we want to create this dream game we've had in our head for years. Maybe it's an open world Zelda style game or an expansive roguelite. No matter what it is, it's probably the spark that got you into game dev in the first place. I've heard so many experienced devs tell me to stop working on my dream game, but never really gave me a reason why. And you know, it's human nature that if you hear someone say you can't do something, it should make you want to do it even more to prove them wrong. Well, the truth is, the problem isn't actually that your game idea is way too ambitious. That's not really what they're saying. This is going to sound harsh, but it's actually probably not a great game idea to begin with. I'm not saying that your ideas don't have potential, maybe you have a really groundbreaking story in mind, but you're not considering the gameplay side of things enough. Maybe you have a fun gameplay loop idea, but it gets old after a little while. If you end up spending months on a project only to realize that the concept doesn't work as well as you imagined in your head, chances are you will either scrap the idea and consider it a waste of time, or give up on this dream entirely. I don't want to see that. In fact, instead of scrapping this idea, Idea, I think you should hold on to it just a bit longer. Changing the way you think starts with seeing that dream game as an end goal instead of the first step of your journey. The weird thing about game development is that you have to work backwards to progress. It feels really counterintuitive, but look at it this way. Your first project is most likely going to be your weakest work because you just don't have the experience yet. Do you really want that to be your dream game? Instead, if you go into game development with the expectation that no matter what, your first project is going to fail, then what's the best course of action? Thank you. 
Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of insight on my own experience. My first three months of learning started how I imagine most people start their own game dev journeys. One day I randomly decided I wanna make games, so I started watching tutorials on YouTube. About a month later, I had a pretty basic understanding of Unity and began working on my first ever game. Over the next two months, I slowly chipped away at building this dream project. Eventually, I reached a point where I realized I just wasn't getting anywhere, and the reason for that was that this game wasn't working the way I wanted it to. I would constantly rework the idea, and in my head I was improving my skills through every version, but in reality, I was just stuck in one place, unable to move forward or make any real progress. So I was forced to put the game aside, knowing that one day when I was truly ready, I would come back to it. That's where this idea of getting my worst game out of the way came into play. I decided that no matter what, I was going to finish something. And even if I knew it wouldn't be perfect, I would still be able to say that at least every project I make after this would be better. Now if you know that your first game is going to be your worst, it's probably a good idea to keep the scale of it pretty small, so that way you move on to something better faster. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be interested in this game idea, it's always going to be more motivating if you're passionate about what you're working on, but it's okay if it doesn't have that same spark that your dream project makes you feel. Just try to find something that gives you enough fulfillment to keep working, but also keep in mind the time you're investing. You gotta find a weird balance between your own personal drive to make this game, while also keeping it reasonable enough to finish. It's not easy to juggle. There were countless times where I felt the urge to move on from making my own practice game, but you have to hold on to the reason why you're doing it in the first place. Always keep an eye on that dream game as your end goal, but try to enjoy the journey that gets you there. Working on smaller games is also great for learning all these small details and intricacies of game design. Starting out, you might think that you understand how to design a level, but there's also a lot that you probably haven't taken into account. What's the core gameplay loop? Are there multiple ways a player can get from point A to point B? What does this level sound like, and what new mechanics are you going to bring to the table? Learning what makes a game fun is much harder than I initially thought, but if you spend a bit of time practicing without some huge, big expectations on yourself to make something incredible, you'll be surprised what that freedom will create. No matter what, you'll always come out of these projects as a stronger developer. And if you eventually want to spend years making your magnum opus of a game, it really can't hurt to put the time in practicing first. Now this seems kind of like a no-brainer, but there really is an understated amount of value you can get out of playing more games. I read a ton of books on game design philosophy, but nothing has been more inspiring and valuable than just playing other games. Once you're in the mindset of a developer, playing video games is kind of like looking through a brand new lens. You'll start to pick up on design ideas that you would have never noticed before, and figuring out what makes a game fun can really only be done by experiencing it yourself. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you to play video games, but next time you do, Pay close attention to why games are designed the way that they are. What makes you feel satisfied and what makes you feel frustrated? Paying attention to core decisions like these will lead you to making better games. So once you finally finish your first and ultimately worst game, what now? The good news is you can really only go up from here. It's at this point where I feel like the journey of game development really begins. You got the hard part out of the way, and now it's time to use that knowledge you gained from it. Your next game should be slightly more ambitious than the last, it should have a bit more passion behind it, and hopefully your understanding of how to take on this new project will be greatly helped by the lessons your first game taught you. This is a cycle that really never ends. Eventually your ability to take on ambitious projects and complete them will lead you right to the doorstep of your dream game. I think at some point you'll realize that your dream project has become just another one of these steps, and whatever you make afterwards will be even better. So as a final thought, game development has the ability to make literally anything possible. By making these games, you're inviting other people into your own world, and if you want to show them what makes you special, first you gotta figure that out for yourself. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, uh, Bye bye